Hey guys, uh, it's Brian again. Uh, today we're going to talk about unloader types and uh, what they mean to you, which ones are better than others, and uh, how to make the right choices. Uh, before we get started, talk about safety. Uh, always wear appropriate safety gear. You go home with all your fingers and your eyes undamaged. Um, as we've mentioned before in these videos, this is a working shop. I tried to do a complete run through when I'm doing this uh, without stopping the video, but because this is a working shop, there's times I have to stop and uh, try to pick right back up where I started at so that you can see in real time how long it takes to do some of these repairs. But today we're not doing a repair. Today we're going to talk about, as I mentioned, the differences in unloaders. All right, so like that. Yeah, so sometimes I have to leave, uh, help somebody out, then I come back, try to pick up exactly where we left off. So what are the differences in the unloaders? How does it help you? Uh, what are the costs involved in maintenance and repair? So we've got three different kinds here I've got. This one is called the banjo style bolt-on unloader to be slight variations of this and the way you can tell this is bolt on you see two big bolts one here one here it bolts on if you can't grasp that you might want to stop the video here and move on to something else but if you can understand that let's move on to the next step the next style you'll see is this this is called an external bypass now it seems a little bit odd to say external because all the unloaders are external yeah they're all external but this one doesn't bolt on, it mounts externally away from the pump. So you see this little space here between the fitting, uh, it, the fitting uh, attaches this to the head. So this is an external style unloader and they're mostly identified with this maybe black, it may be red, it may be whatever color hose that's on the side here. It comes out of the back, the high pressure dumps off rotates, uh, flows through this hose and goes into the low pressure side, goes through the pump again and you're back up here again. And then the third kind that you're going to see, and this is going to be mostly in your box stores like Lowe's and Home Depot, things like that, <clears throat> is this style unloader. And this one does not bolt on, it is not removable. As you can see, it's part of the head. Alright, so the entire thing is made to the pump. So we'll get back to this one. Most common unloaders are going to be this one here, bolt on style. Pretty simple, they're inexpensive, they are rebuildable. You would uh, remove everything from here and replace inside, but these are usually cost effective enough, around 80 bucks, that you can replace the entire unloader uh, without a great deal of expense. And it's actually easier because you remove this bolt and this bolt, pull the old one off line this up and put the two bolts on with the gaskets that come with it and then you're done as far as uh, mounting it. You then have to adjust the, the, the pressure and you can see this lock bolt right here Let's spin it around I can see if I can there it is. You see there's a uh, set screw get a flashlight. See a little set screw right there and what that does is it locks that collar. So once you put this unloader on you're going to loosen that bolt, excuse me, that set screw, and you're going to tighten this nut all the way down to here. And you'll run this machine with your pressure, uh, pressure hose and your water hose, and then you're going to incrementally increase this pressure. And you're going to do it, you see there's a positive and a negative. You get a positive and a negative. So if you turn it to the negative, okay. So uh, you turn it to the negative side, your pressure decreases, turn it to the positive side, pressure increases. So once you have this put on the machine and it's running and you've got your lock nut down, you start the machine, everything's running, it's building pressure, you're going to incrementally turn up the pressure, turn it up, up, up. And as it's running, you're going to listen to the engine. When the engine starts to really struggle like it's trying to choke off, you're going to stop increasing the pressure you're going to back the pressure back off about a half a turn to ease that pressure 
and then you're going to turn your machine off. Once you turn it off, you're going to go back to your lock nut, and you're going to adjust this up until it hits the bottom of the, uh, the unloader. Once it hits the bottom of the unloader and it can't go up anymore, you're then going to tighten up your set screw to lock that nut in that position. Now what that does, what you've just done, you've set the pressure on this unloader. So you've reached the maximum pressure that your engine can handle. Doesn't matter if it's 13, 11, 10, 2 horsepower, doesn't matter. You've now reached the maximum pressure that the machine can handle and you've locked it in place so that you don't exceed that and, and bog the motor down and shut it off. So this is a good cost effective unloader, easy to, to repair, easier to replace and more cost effective to replace. Now what's the advantage of this guy? This guy does all the same things we just talked about. You set them almost all the same way. Some of these will be a little bit different. There'll be a nut in here you'll adjust, you'll tighten up instead of, uh, instead of uh, the, the lock nut at the bottom here is a nut at the top here, but uh, virtually the same. The advantage of this guy, and I prefer these, is this hose right here. When this one unloads, it dumps back down through this little, from the high pressure to the low pressure, in this little section here. This one does the same thing, but it runs through this hose. This hose acts like a radiator. And there's another video you can see where I explain the dangers of overheating the pump. So this hose acts as a radiator and it allows the water to cool off a bit before it dumps back into the low pressure side. And that saves your pump, saves your pack, and saves your piston or plungers on this thing. So this one is an advantage in, in the respect that it saves your pump. It doesn't work any better, work any different. It just saves your pump from overheating a lot better. This is your thermal dump. And again, in that other video on overheating your pump, this is explained. But that extra piece of hose on the back, 16 to 20 inches, acts as a radiator and it cools the water off before it dumps it back in and, and runs it through the pump again. But everything else, principle-wise, is the same. Now, this is the most common, as I said, that you'll see in your, your uh, box stores. I don't like them. A couple reasons why I don't like them. They're not replaceable. You cannot take that off and replace it. A lot of them are not adjustable. Even though you have the black knob sitting on top, a lot of them are not adjustable. Your pressure is what it is from the factory, period. These do not last as long as the bolt-on style or the external. These, a lot of times, are not rebuildable because they're mass-produced in some Chinese factory somewhere. And, uh, yeah, it's an AR pump, as you can see here. But also, you see right here, it's not made in Italy like a lot of them. It's made in China. Now, they're cost-effective. Yeah, this is an inexpensive pump. Usually, when something goes wrong with these pumps, you take the whole pump off, just like we did this one, and you put a whole new pump on it. So I prefer that people stay away from this type of pump. The bolt-on style, the external style are better because you can they're, they're easy to replace. If there's an issue with this unloader, and there's going to be eventually, then it's more cost-effective on the other ones to replace the unloader because you're just replacing on this is about 80 bucks. Now the externals are more expensive. They run about. Um, uh, 130 to as much as $300 depending on the type of setup you got but I don't like these um, that's why I ended up when these come in there's no, the part availability is almost zero the uh, cost of the parts are higher the cost of these parts are higher than the cost of the entire unloader that's bolt on but you don't have that option on this the best way to uh, keep uh, in mind whether this is something you want to go with or not, if the unloader is bolted on, you're good to go. If it's made on, leave it alone. And you notice on this pump, you got three plugs and three plugs here and here. And this one, you've only got three on the top, nothing on the front. To access those valves, you have to pull the whole head off to access the valves on the back side. So th th these are really not meant to be serviced. They're meant to be used and thrown away when you're done. Sad to say, but that's the truth of it. All right, so that's pretty much on unloaders. Uh, 
Again, cost effective, pretty versatile. These, longevity of a pump, these. If you want to throw money in the trash, these. Personal opinion. I mean, 31 years of doing this, and I think I have a little bit of authority on what, what way to go on some of these things. But if you got any questions, any comments, or requests, feel free to drop me a message, and uh, I'll see what I can do for you. Otherwise, you guys be safe. Thank you.